still driving alongside the Benguela Railroad on the way to the next town, Luendo. Ach, not Luendo. Yeah, Luendo. Marabu Storks, this is the National Park. On our left, there's some Marabu Storks. Beautiful wetlands. road runs all the way to the port city of Lobito. Shol, how are you doing Shol? I'm doing very well, thanks. Just gonna keep my eyes on the road. <laughs> Good driving. Yeah, it's it's a really exciting trip so far. What do you say about last night's accommodation? <laughs> it, it was uh, very interesting. It started off with the police offering that we could stay in one of the administrative buildings, which was very kind. Uh, and they escorted us there, so we were happy to have a the prospect of a night of good night sleeping in nice accommodation and safe and uh, so we went there and then they gave us uh, a bit of a rundown of what we could expect staying there so we got quite excited and then they asked to see our passports and all the paperwork everything seemed in order and then one guy arrived and uh, we couldn't quite follow because they were all speaking Portuguese but it seemed like he wasn't happy with something. It was hard to read him though, but that's what it seemed like. And then we ended up waiting for probably two and a half to three hours, just standing outside this building, waiting for them to do something or to discuss and clarify something amongst themselves. So a bunch of guys came and left during that time, and everybody had opinions and questions, and everybody wanted to see our passports and look at the vehicle paperwork. And then they'd tell us that we don't have to wait long, we'll, we'll be able to go soon into the accommodation. Until at some point, probably two hours into the wait, when they started saying no, uh, they might not be able to find the key, because the guys got the keys in around, so then we uh, would we be happy to camp there, which we had offered hours before, just to pitch our tents, and we said yes, absolutely. And then waited longer and then at some point they said okay they can't find the key uh, we can go in and pitch our tents which we started doing um, and as we started getting everything out the vehicle and started getting our tents ready to pitch they came and said stop stop we found the key <laughs> then we started pack unpacking everything putting it back uh, by now it's three hours later then they told us that uh, they just want to quickly connect the electricity, uh, which we then waited for another half an hour as they tried to get the wires connected. And then let me say, they're all being very helpful. It's not, it wasn't even incompetence, it was really just them trying to help the whole time. Obviously it was unexpected that there are going to be visitors and that they were going to have a stay at this place. So it was another half an hour and then eventually they were like, no, they don't want us staying in the accommodation without electricity. So then this compromise plan was that out of concern for our safety they then suggested that we pitch our tents on the front porch of the, of the school which was right next to the police office, police station. So they could keep an eye on us from the police station for our safety and so we could have a, a place to camp for the night which is what we did and I'm sure Leon will share some photos of what that campsite looked like. It was probably one of the, the more interesting campsites we've ever stayed in. Leon. <laughs> that was uh, definitely that was definitely <laughs> one of the more interesting campsites that I've ever been in. Yeah, and the night was I mean it it was safe and warm and so actually great. Uh, but it was you know very noisy. Leon and I were just talking about how well after two maybe half past two, three in the morning there was still very loud music playing from somewhere. <laughs> and cars in the distance and a lot of activity and even people's voices. Um, so yeah, certainly they, they seem to be people who enjoy 
late nights. And no early mornings because it's very early in the morning it's dead quiet. Yeah, so dead it's probably quiet. the best time of the day. So, and it's, it's, so Charles, did you at any stage think that you're going to sleep in the, in the actual police cells? <laughs> Was it, did you no. have that idea? Because the, the captain did say we, we, they're going to take us to the police station. That's true. So we did have a conversation quietly amongst Leon and I about what that exactly meant. Whether <laughs> he meant, you know, we could stay somewhere on the premises or whether he was suggesting we might have to stay somewhere like the police cells. Which the prospect of which obviously was a little bit concerning because communication is tough. Very that's, tough. That's, they speak... Uh, one or two guys actually spoke fairly good English, um, but certainly our Portuguese, there's, we had very little understanding. Uh, so that's actually something we've been quite thankful so far. Yeah. Every time it seems at like critical points, somebody's come around who's yeah. able to speak English and yeah. able to translate and, and help us explain what we want to do or what is needed, and then similarly to tell us what the Portuguese speakers are saying. So. So far, that's been pretty good. Yeah, and and I do find that some of the younger people seem to understand English uh, at least. Uh, there, yeah. there is a bit of understanding, but yeah, the communication yeah, is definitely. still very tough to to negotiate your way around yeah. without being Portuguese. The road seems to get better, to be getting better, Sean. Yeah, not a moment too soon. <laughs>